Uh, Lord Jesus, I, I thank you, Father. I thank you for your word. Uh, Lord, I ask you to forgive my sins, Father. And uh, I just ask that you, that you anoint my lips and that you bring uh, to my remembrance and to, to my heart those things that you want to share. And, and that which you don't want to share, that just uh, leave that alone, Father. But that, uh, that, you, that your word would, would come forth and your, your will would be accomplished here today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, uh, I, uh, uh, what the, the Lord gave me, I, I actually gave a title to, to my uh, word today, and it's, uh, the, it's a two-part title. It's God Tests Us, and it's What About Fruit? And uh, uh, there, there is a scripture that uh, uh, God just spoke to my heart. To, uh, I was gonna, I was gonna do it at the end. Uh, at first, I, I didn't include it at all, and then I was gonna, I was gonna end with it. But, but God really put on my heart to, to begin with it, and it's, it's James uh, chapter one and uh, verses, verses two and three, and uh, it says. Consider it all joy, my brethren, when you encounter various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. And uh, let endurance have its perfect result, that you may be perfect and complete and lacking nothing. And uh, I, really, I really think... Uh, uh, that God wants us to know, because we're going, we're going to be talking about God testing us today, and uh, and He speaks here of the testing of our faith, that it produces endurance. Right? And uh, I think that's the that's one of the things we're after. Uh, okay, so I was uh, I was doing. I was doing my devotions, and uh, uh, I, I took the day off Saturday, and I'm, I'm going through the Bible. I'm just reading and reading and reading, and and I just do that until God shows me something that He wants me to preach about. <laughs> and uh, I had uh, I had been going going for a while, and then I got to uh, I got to the first chapter of Romans, and uh, and Paul is giving his introduction, and he. He uh, uh, tells the church uh, at the Romans. He's never been. He's he's never visited Rome, and he doesn't he doesn't know these people. But he's telling them how he longs to be there, and and the part that jumped out at me was was that he longs to partake of some fruit, some uh, some fruit that that. Uh, that is in their lives, and uh, that just it just lit up the page. Now, so I, you know, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna share that scripture, but uh, that's that's how the Lord led me to do this, and uh, and also I was doing a, a devotion by uh, uh, by Jonathan Kahn, and uh, and he was talking about God testing us, and uh, and I really felt that that the two that the two really fit together really well. And so I start out with a question. Do you know that God tests us? Yes. Yeah. Yes. He tests us. Okay. Why does he test us? We and, to see where we are. Okay. That's that's a pretty good answer. I'd like to I'd like to just uh, to give an example here is uh, we've all been to school, right? And you remember when you were in school, I mean, you might have been studying history and the teacher would have uh, uh, teach you things in class and send you home uh, to do homework. And then you would have a test. Right? And why did the teacher give you a test? To ensure you knew it. <laughs> to find out what you learned. <laughs> Absolutely, and I mean, be this, the same thing uh, in arithmetic when you were in 
in grammar school, uh, they didn't just uh, assume that you learn to add, right? You got a test, and and if you got if you, if the question was three plus four, and you put down the answer equals six, well then they know you didn't learn, right? <laughs> but if you put seven, then they know, right? And of course, the all through school we experienced this testing, right? Well, God tests us. And uh, so I wanted to, to, to bring to light a couple examples from the scripture of the Lord testing people. Okay? And one of them is going uh, to be God testing Abraham. And the other one is where uh, Jesus was tested. Okay? So we're going to look at those two. So the first one is Genesis uh, I, we're not going to look at the scripture for the whole story of Abraham. I'm going to I'm going to recount it a bit. But what I really like us to to see here is in Genesis 22, chapter verses one and two. Now it came about after these things, God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and he said, Here I am. Uh, he said. Take now your son, your only son, whom you love, Isaac, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him as a burnt offering on one of the mountains, which I will tell you. So God directly says that uh, God tested Abraham. This was a test. God had already uh spoken to Abraham, given Abraham promises over and over again, three or four times, uh, uh, God would appear to Abraham and promise him that he would give uh, this land to his descendants. And he told him uh, the thing, some things that would transpire. Uh, uh, before that, Abraham was faithful to leave his, his home in Ur and... Uh, follow uh, the, the God to, to where he would lead him into what, what eventually became Israel, right? Mm -hmm. And um, so Abraham already uh, had received God's promises, already had been a testimony to the people around him, uh, but God tested him. And so God tells him to, to, to sacrifice his son. This was the son that God had promised, promised him. And Abraham's obedient because he had such a relationship with God. He had such a relationship with the Lord that he knew that whatever the Lord told him, it was going to turn out good. Because he knew God's love in his life. He had followed God for, for years and years in his life. And even though this, this didn't seem right, he knew God was going to work it out. And then I'd like us to, to, to go down to, it's still in Genesis, but I want to read verses 15 through 18. Uh, uh, before I do, I... I give a little explanation that uh, Abraham was obedient. He went to Mount Moriah. Uh, he got uh, Isaac. Uh, he, he put the wood down, got put Isaac on top of it, and he was ready to kill him. Uh, he's got, he had his knife up, ready to kill him, and the angel of God stops him and says, now I know, you know, that, that you'd be obedient to me in this. He says, that's enough. I just wanted to, I just wanted to see, I just wanted to test you to see if you'd be obedient. And then in, in uh, verse 15, then the angel of the Lord called out to Abraham a second time from heaven and said, 
By myself I have sworn, declares the Lord, because you have done this thing and not withheld your son, your only son, indeed I will greatly bless you. I will greatly multiply your seed as the stars of the heavens and as the sand which is on the seashore. And your seed shall possess the gate of their enemies. In your seed all the nations of the earth shall be blessed because you have obeyed my voice. So Abraham was tested and he passed the test. Amen. Praise God. And even today, we, we call ourselves children of Abraham because we're of the like faith of Abraham. Okay. Now, God is not calling us to sacrifice our children on a mountain. Okay. But he is calling us to obedience. I want to get, before, before we move on, I want to give one more example of God testing is Jesus test. And I, will, I want to look at uh, uh, Matthew chapter one and uh, just uh, to confirm here that this was a test from God, even though he was tempted by the devil. It says in Matthew four, chapter one, that Jesus was led up by the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And uh, Matthew shares with us three temptations which, uh, which uh, Jesus faced there. First, we know that he fasted, fasted for 40 days. And when he was really hungry, the devil tempted him and says, turn these stones into bread. What did Jesus say? He said, it is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word from the mouth of God. Amen. You know, and the Lord really wants that to be our desire. I know Rhonda, in many different ways, brings this, this, this message, this desire for God to be most important thing. And that's what he's talking about here. Every word of God. Uh, then... Uh, he tempted him to drum, jump off the pinnacle of the temple. Remember that? Puts him up on the pinnacle of the temple and he says, If you're the son of God, jump down! You know, it, because it is written, he will bear you up. His, he, his, he'll give his angels charge concerning you and they'll, they'll bear you up lest you strike your foot against the stone. You know, so he's tempting Jesus to, to make a spectacle and to... And to tempt God. And Jesus, Jesus wasn't going to go for that. He says, no. It's also written, you shall not put the Lord your God to the test. You know? I mean, it's, it's kind of like we, we, uh, we drive cars all the time, right? And it's a very dangerous proposition, isn't it? It is. I mean, we, we, we drive around at 60, 65, sometimes 75, 80 miles an hour. <laughs> you do. <laughs> But we don't play chicken, right? <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> so we don't tempt God. Okay, and that's and Jesus Jesus didn't either. And uh, then the devil offered him all the kingdoms of the world. Put him up on the mountain. And he says, I'll give you all of these if you bow down and worship me. And Jesus says, it is written, you shall worship uh, the Lord thy, serve the Lord, worship the Lord thy God and serve only him. Amen. Satan be gone. And the devil left him. Okay, so you read that uh, Abraham was tempted. Jesus was tempted. Okay, well, a a a Abraham was tested. Jesus was tested. What do you think? You think, you think that we'll be tested? Of course. Absolutely, right? Okay. So we want to move on now. Get rid of this page. Okay. Now I, I want to, again, I'm going to, it's Matthew 21, and we're, we're going to read uh, verses uh, 
33 and 34, and then I, I, I'm going to fill in the story, okay, Cause so, so we don't spend our whole time just reading. Uh, and then the verse 33, it says, Listen to another pa parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard and put a wall around it and dug a wine press in it and built a tower. And he rented it out to vine growers and went on a journey. When the harvest time approached, he sent slaves to the vine growers to receive his produce. Okay, now we, we, we know this parable and uh, Jesus is telling this parable to the Pharisees and the scribes. And he's des he describes how the, uh, these tenants, they didn't receive the servants that this uh, vineyard owner sent. They uh, beat one, they abused another one and sent them back, they killed another one. And then when he, when he sent his son, they killed him as well. But what I want to look at here is what the vine grower was after. The vine grower, he sent his slaves and he sent his son to receive some of the produce of the vineyard. What's the produce of a vineyard? Grapes. Grapes. It's fruit, right? Yes. And I remember during our Wednesday Bible, Bible study, we were talking about uh, uh, the scripture and reading, reading the Old Testament and, and struggling with the way God dealt with Israel, how, how severe he was. Uh, but he was severe. And he... he, he punished sin severely, and he had uh, some pretty strict laws, but the purpose of them was to create a society where the children of Israel would be able to live lives where they bore fruit, where, where, they, where they could love each other, where they could treat each other justly, where they could be fair with each other, where each one could have his own employment and not abuse the other one. That, that's what the, all the Old Testament laws were about. And that's what the punishment for sin was about, to direct the people to live together in love and bearing fruit. And when, when these people didn't, didn't want to receive that, that's, they, 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 didn't, they didn't want to give that fruit. They didn't, they didn't want to live like that. And we have a similar thing today. Okay. All right. Now... Okay, so I want to take a, remember we talked about the classroom at, at, when, when I, at the beginning here, we talked about liking it to a classroom. Well, our walk with the Lord is like that classroom. You know, we... We, we are in a classroom. We, we study God's Word. We encourage people to, stu to study God's Word. Mm -hmm. Okay? That's like, that's going to school. We pray. We encourage, we encourage prayer. Okay? That's talking to God. That's, that's part of training that's 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 our our schooling we meet together just like you do in school in school we learn to relate to each other right so 
what's the test? Okay, so we're in school. We study God's word. We pray. We meet together. But what's the test? How does God test us? Okay, so I'd like us to, to, to turn to, to Matthew. Uh, I think it's 13. I, I put an ex, uh an exclamation point there on my page, but I think it's thir Matthew 13, 23. Is that? Yeah, that's it. Thank you. You, you deciphered it, Jen. Uh, and, uh, okay, this is uh, in Jesus' exhortation about the parable of the sower. And just to give us a brief uh um, what do you call that? Uh, uh, review. A brief review of the parable of the sower. The sower goes out to sow seed. He's got his bag of grain. He's throwing it out uh, on the field. And uh, some, some falls beside the road. And, uh, and the birds eat it, remember? And some falls on rocky places. And it springs up right away. But because... Because it doesn't really have a depth of soil, when the sun comes up, they wither and they, they die. And then others uh, get sown among the thorns. And the thorns, remember the thorns, they, they choke them out, right? It, so, so it doesn't, doesn't bear any fruit. Okay. And uh, so in, in verse 23, it says... And the one on whom the good seed was sown on the soil, this man who hears the word and understands it, who, in, who indeed bears fruit and brings forth some a hundredfold, some sixty, and some thirty. So, we're in school, we're learning God's word, we get homework, we study God's word, we pray, we talk to God, right? Because, because we can have a relationship with him. It's like talking to the instructor, right? And then we meet together, we learn to, to, to get along with other children, right? <laughs> but, but so we do all those things, but what's the test? So that we bear fruit, right? right? Okay. So that we bear fruit. That's going to be God's test. All right. And we're going we're gonna to talk about that. Okay. So first we're going we're gonna to turn to Galatians chapter 5. And we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna read what the fruit of the Spirit is. We know what the fruit of the Spirit is. We, some of us might have it by memory. Some of some of us may be dull, but as we refresh it, you'll say, oh, yeah, yeah, I know that. Uh, but because we're talking about fruit and fruit of the Spirit, it's important that we do this. Uh, Galatians 5.22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love. That's the first one. And I, and, and this, and I believe it's not only the first one, it's the one all the other fruits flow out of. Okay. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. Now those belong, who belong to Christ it gets a little dicey here now. Uh, have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Did you, did, you, did you know that we cannot bear all this fruit of the Spirit unless we crucify the flesh and its passions and desires? Because the passions and desires of the flesh are going to lead us away from the Lord and from bearing this fruit. It says, if we live by the Spirit, let us also walk by the Spirit. 
and let us not become boastful, challenging one another and envying one another. So, and I mean, this is the, this is the part of the testing where we, we learn to play with the other boys and girls. You know? And sometimes God wants us to do things that we don't want to do. And it's important to, at one, one teaching or sermon that I gave, I talked about uh, Jesus in the garden and how, it, how he prayed because his flesh did not want to to die. Didn't. No, he wants to die. And he had to, to wrestle with that in prayer three times for one hour each time. He wrestled so strongly with his flesh that he sweat drops of blood. And sometimes when God, I mean, I'm speaking to myself here. When God wants me to do something that I don't want to do, I have to get before God in prayer and say, God, I don't want to do that. Please help. Yes. <laughs> and he does. But this, this is what we need to do. And I want to, to, to show the importance of this fruit. I, I want to turn to Matthew 7. And I'm going to read from uh, verse 15 to verse 20. It says, Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruits. Grapes are not gathered from thorn bushes, nor figs from thistles, are they? No. So then, every good tree bears good fruit. But the bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot produce bad fruit. Nor can a bad tree produce good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. So then, you will know them by their fruits. So, all of this going to school, going to church, uh, praying, studying the Word, what the effect it's supposed to have on our lives, it's supposed to bring us to a place where we bear fruit. If we don't bear fruit, it says we get thrown into the fire. All right, and uh, I think this is the, my last page and my last, sure. Okay, now this is the right answer to the test. It's in Matthew 25, and uh, I'm going to read verses 37 through 40. And this is about when Jesus talks about the judgment. And uh, he... Uh, People are coming before the Lord for the judgment. And uh, those on his right go to be with the Lord for eternity with bliss and happiness and joy. And those on his left, they go to eternal punishment. And, and this is the judgment. Now, uh, uh, you know, there's a negative judgment for... I'm going I'm to read you the positive judgment. But the, the ones who are on the left 
and go to eternal punishment, uh, these are the ones that didn't do what these that did that we're going to read, okay? And uh, so in verse, verse 37, it says, uh, Then the righteous will answer. Uh, of course, the Lord, uh, I, I chose this part of it because it, it rehashes what God has already described as the judgment, okay? And uh, then the righteous will answer and says, this is the criteria that God used is to say, okay, you guys on my right, you're, you're, you're going to be with me forever. Uh, then the righteous answered him and said, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you? Or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in? Or naked and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and come to you? And the king will answer and say to them, Truly I say to you, to the extent that you did it to one of these brothers of mine, even the least of them, you did it to me. Amen. So, that's that's our test. That's the passing grade that our relationship with Jesus and our getting to know him through the study of his word, through prayer and through fellowship with one another, that that we bear the fruit of the Spirit that we read about in Galatians and, and we become these benevolent people that Jesus talks about in Ma Matthew 25. That when we see someone who is hungry, that we feed them, or thirsty, we give them to drink or a stranger. We, we invited you in. They can clothe you. So uh, sometimes, sometimes God wants us to do this to people that uh, you may not want to. He says to the least of them. So I just, I just want to, to, to leave us with with an encouragement that, uh, that we really seriously pursue the Lord and allow the Holy Spirit to, to work in and through us uh, that we can bear fruit and that there's, if there's something in our lives that, that is hindering that, that we really that we give it to the Lord. And uh, if, we need, if it's something we, we need prayer for, uh, to, uh, to, to let go of, to give to the Lord, that we do that. But... Uh, I just really believe we need to do that. that. We need to let go of anything that would hinder us from, from following the Lord fully. And uh, that's all I have. If you want, uh, looks like Rondo wants to add something here. Good message. Good message. Good message. Good message. Um, It's interesting how the Lord works and you know I didn't know you were going to come here today you know and then we use the analogy of being in a classroom right and then he brings that message that's pretty cool that's how the Spirit of God works that's how he works in us and all around us and we're really open to see um, the enemy really attempted to distract things pretty well here but you know what it didn't work our father is in control god is in control of what's going on um i want to encourage us uh you know we need to be talking to one another and i, I want to remind you to use your prayer list and to reach out to members that we have not been seeing coming 
um, maybe they need some encouragement. Maybe there's something going on and they need prayer. So reach out to them. Let them know that they're missed. I mean, I'm doing this, but please understand it can't just be me. For me to say that we miss them, but nobody else reaches out doesn't really speak much to their hearts. So we just want to make sure we're reaching out to people and reminding them, hey, we, we need to come together. We need to come to The world is saying we need to be apart, but we need to come together. Why do we need to do that? Why is fellowship important? Why is it important? Because we're a vine. We're all part of the vine, yes. If we have fellowship together and we stay connected it helps to fill us up, doesn't it? It does. It helps to strengthen us, doesn't it? It truly is strength in numbers, isn't there? He was talking to me today. Yeah. Well, he's talking to yeah, all of us. It. And, you know, we need to make sure that we're reminding people that fellowship is really important. We need to be coming together. But even more than that, as John pointed out, we need to put him first. And we're witnessing over and over again People are not putting him first. They're putting themselves first. They're putting their pleasures first. And we need to put God first. Yeah. So it's a very good message, and I really appreciate that, John. Thank you.